Hello, welcome back to Software Dude. In the context of data processing systems, right, choosing between batch processing and stream processing is a fundamental decision that affects uh, performance, scalability, uh, latency, implementation complexity. Right. Today we are going to discuss batch processing and stream processing, and let's see the trade-offs between the two. Right. So let's get started. Starting with batch processing. What is exactly batch processing? Right? Batch processing involves processing large volumes of data collected over a period of time, what we basically called batches, right? which is basically data processed in chunks or batches, can be at a scheduled intervals or can be also on need basis depending on when a, a call or a request is coming from the client. But like for example, batch get, right? I mean that can be an API and it is suitable for scenarios where latency is not critical right because batch processing a batch of uh, data can take time so where latency is not a critical uh, requirement batch processing is a suitable uh, is a suitable uh, uh, trade off and, uh, and an option to take next is stream processing stream processing is a stream of uh, data that is being processed continuously right so it involves processing data in real time as it arrives, right? I mean, there is no lag or there is no wait. As it arrives, you are processing, continuing to process data. Data is processed element by element with minimal delay. It's not like you are handling a batch of data. It's like because it is coming in the form of a stream, so you are processing one by one uh, with minimum delay, right? The maximum delay it will be is the maximum time that it will take for processing one element, right? And it is ideal for applications requiring low latency or real time processing, so to speak, right? So that is stream processing. Now let's look at the trade offs between batch and stream processing to start with, like we always do latency, like we, we talked about in batch, the latency is high, uh, but in stream processing, the latency is low. Uh, primarily in batch processing, it is suitable for non sensitive time, non time sensitive applications, right? Uh, but in uh, stream processing, uh, it is uh, more suitable, it provides immediate insights, support, supports real-time decision-making, wherever those kind of scenarios are there, uh, stream processing is more useful. Uh, data size, uh, large volumes uh, of data at once is used in batch processing, but in stream, because it is continuous processing of data, it is in small chunks, right? Complexity, in batch, uh, it is much simpler to implement but in stream it is more more complex to to implement uh, stream processing right uh, that is basically because there is it's not just about developing but also about maintaining right if there is some problem in a batch you can debug batch uh, processing systems much faster but in cases of stream processing it can be uh, very difficult right uh, next is uh, processing frequency so in processing frequency I mean, it can be batches primarily we use in scheduled intervals. It can be for a, a nightly run jobs or that can be for uh, like any kind of periodic uh, systems. But it's not like that is the only time where batch is used. Batch processing can also be used in, uh, if you provide a batch API in your, in your system, right? Uh, stream processing, like we mentioned, processing of data is continuous. I mean, there is the frequency is continuous as and when data arrives, uh, it is it is continuously processed. Next is resource utilization. So uh, in batch processing, one of the pros is it can optimize resource usage uh, uses during peak hours, right, or during off peak hours, right. I mean, depending on when your system is. So it is better su uh, suited for complex computations, right, which require like significant amount of resources, right. So batch is primarily spiky, it uses large memory CPU, uh, because it is in batch of windows. And then when you are processing a batch, it is like a huge amount of data that you are now processing at one time, right, whenever that happens. So it is either a peak or a off peak. So it, it is better suited for complex uh, computations right because it requires uh, significant amount of resources right but in stream processing it is more more consistent resource utilization because it is spread across the workload is spread across evenly over a period of time uh, but one one negative thing is 
for because it is always on need basis right so it always requires that the infrastructure is on or up right your docker containers might need to be up your stream processing systems might need to be up so there is no downtime because you you are expecting data to come in at any point of time so you always have to be ready your system always have to be ready so if you are on a on a uh, using a system or using a compute which is charging you per minute or per minute it is up then stream processing can be very costly affair right because it always has to up with has to be up whether you it is processing some amount of data or not right uh, depends it can also be resource inten uh, intensive uh, for continuous processing like in terms of peak there can be or say if you are if you are watching a video right i mean in terms of netflix or other kind of companies where you are streaming videos i mean it is continuous data uh, that is being fed right so at that point of time there might be peaks right and the next trade off is fault tolerance and uh, recovery so in fault tolerance like batch processing in batch processing it is very easier to implement fault tolerance right you basically have to rerun the failed batches right in that way uh, so rerunning the failed batches is easy uh, uh, in in batch processing you have to have proper error handling proper way you in which you can retrive a batch like say if there is an error you have to configure retries and i will post uh, the video in the description where we have discussed about different failure strategies and how do you uh, handle those with retries jitter back off so i'll, I'll pay, post that in the uh, in this video's description but that is how if your system is built resilient right then it can if there is a failed batch you do not actually throw that error back to the customer right rather you can maybe queue that request move it to a dead later queue and redrive that that batch again after say few milliseconds or few seconds so in that way you can rerun your failed batches so eventually the customer does not need to know that something has failed in the backend so that's a that's a good thing it provides uh, fault tolerance it is easier to implement fault tolerance but uh, one of the uh, the cons in batch processing in terms of fault tolerance that it there can be potential for data loss between the batches right i mean in that way uh, because recovery can be can be a bit slow but in case of stream processing stream processing real time failure mechanism is there in stream processing which minimizes the data loss because there is replication there is checkpointing right like those kind of things are present in stream processing but it in that case it is more complex to implement stream uh, stream processing as a result of which it is also more uh, more complex in terms of implementing fault tolerance and recovery uh, strategies uh, but in stream processing there can be need for uh, exactly once processing semantics right you might want to for example uh, if you are building a messaging application right a chat message like say for whatsapp when you are typing a message and pressing the send button that message has to go to the the receiver only once it cannot be processed so there is a one uh, like exactly once processing uh, semantic that is required right there can be scenarios where there can be at least once processing so then if there is at least once processing then that means if if you are a client of such a streaming service right then you have to handle that it does not become a duplicate message so you have to handle if there is some error and if there is some retry that can cause duplicates then you have to handle that in your code so implementing all these right in stream processing systems can be complex so which is why uh, stream processing is a bit complex but both have their own use cases in which we, uh, it can be used depending on uh, what is the scenario like for example in a in a video call right high latency might result in delays right uh, between uh, when one person speaks and the, when the other person hears it right so which reduces the overall quality and user experience so you have to understand if you are implementing an application which which is basically a video call or a chat in those kind of systems you might have to do the trade off what is important is latency uh, important is low latency important right in online gaming again low latency is very crucial right for real time responsiveness you have to have that that uh, that feeling of shooting a target or like kicking a ball right so those kind of things have to have that otherwise the entire experience is uh, very real time so latency has to be very slow so in those those kind of systems you have to understand what is the trade off that should be used when you are designing uh, whether depending on what kinds of requirement you have but uh, the data processing system has to think in terms of whether you want to apply a batch or a stream processing system right 
but there are cases where we use hybrid approaches also right so not like for example like we have seen in all these system design there is no one size fits all model so depending on if you are building a huge large scale distributed application one one way might not work so you might have to implement both the ways depending on where you want to uh, implement batch and where you want to implement uh, stream processing for example lambda architecture lambda architecture combines both batch and stream processing uh, to basically provide accurate and uh, uh, comprehensive data views right another is kappa architecture kappa architecture primarily focuses on stream processing uh, but allows reprocessing of historical data if needed right so so that way it is kind of an uh, of a hybrid approach right now what are the primary use cases of batch processing uh, batch processing is used in data warehousing right uh, where you are aggregating and storage uh, storing large data sets for historical analysis right it is used in etl etl is extract transform load right periodically extracting data from sources transforming it and loading it into databases right so entire uh, etl process is uh, uses batch processing report generation right generating like periodic business reports or analytical reports or like downloading excel sheets exports right those are based on aggregated data which are often use cases for batch processing systems right uh, now for streaming use cases is more like we discussed more real time uh, analytics like analyzing live data streams right so that you are able to provide immediate insights right monitoring and alerting right uh, detecting and responding to events for example say uh, fraud detection right or health system monitoring health checks right which are like very you are you are monitoring and alerting on systems so that you are able to detect and you are able to respond if there is something that is wrong with the system so immediate kind of responsiveness is very important and whenever that is the case you need stream use cases and stream processing systems right another is iot data processing again processing data from sensors uh, and devices in real time uh, for responsive actions right so in those kind of situations also stream processing is uh, is a use case where you might want to build systems which 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 like stream processing systems right so that is batch processing and stream processing systems uh, hopefully this was useful thank you